Hello, and welcome to Light Rose Day ASMR. Today, I'm going to be doing something a little different. I'm going to be doing a short little Bible study. And uh, I haven't seen many of these in the ASMR realm. Um, I know there's... Uh, different people you can find uh, doing relaxing scripture reading and things of that sort but I thought why not kill two birds with one stone I am a youth pastor and I do a lot of studying I went to school and got my bachelor's in theology and pastoral ministries so I thought why not do a little studying while filming. Um, I also see a lot of people sleeping in church. I did growing up. So hey, I make a great ASMR video. <laughs> Alright, well let's get into it. started in the book of John a couple weeks ago, and uh, we're in chapter one, so my lesson, my next lesson for the teens is going to be about John the Baptist, and I will be in John chapter one, verses 19 through 28. So I'm just going to read these few verses before we get into it. Verse 19. This is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent to him priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? And he confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. They asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? So that we may give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? And he said, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him and said to him, Why then are you baptizing if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah? nor the prophet. John answered them, saying, I baptize in water, but among you stands one whom you do not know. It is he who comes after me, the thong of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing. Now what I have already taught the teens through this chapter, the beginning of the chapter, talks about Jesus, but not as the name Jesus. He refers to him as the Word, the Word that was in the beginning with God, and the Word that was God pointing out that Jesus, although he was human, he had not always necessarily began as a human when born of Mary, that Jesus has always been, and he's always been existing with God, but only that, but he is God, which is the mystery of the Trinity. 
but there was this man, John the Baptist. Baptist not be being the meaning as you would think it today. It's properly the baptizer. He was a guy who immersed people into water. We'll get to that a little bit later. But this guy, John, got people's attention. And the overall theme of this lesson, the application, the point that I want to pull from this short portion is humility. What, or else should I say, why do we as people like to boast and brag about our accomplishments and about ourselves? You know, the uh, number one topic we like to talk about is ourselves. We love ourselves. We take care of ourselves. We uh, feed ourselves. We make sure that we have comfort, that we are entertained, and we think very highly of ourselves. Now, this is not wrong. We're supposed to take care of ourselves. And the Bible also teaches us how we are to love other people. It's the very same way we love ourselves. We take care of ourselves. We feed ourselves. We show love to ourselves. That's the standard at which we are to measure our love for others. But... We can take it too far to the point of pride where we boast about ourselves and we become almost beyond loving ourselves and become in love with ourselves. And John is the exact opposite. He is an example of our need for humility and what that looks like. Let's look into it. Verse 19 talks about the Jewish people sending some of their priests to find this man who had gained attention because he was baptizing people and talking about things that were foreign. And so actually... It seems as though that the Jews thought that John was actually Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one, the one they were being, they had been waiting for. It says in verse 19, they came to him and they asked, Who are you? And John, it says in verse 20, it says, And he confessed. And he did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. John is very zealous and adamant, and right off the bat, taking the focus and the attention off himself. I am not the Christ. And if you notice, as we go on, his answer remains the same and it gets shorter and shorter. John's focus was on the Messiah and pointing people towards him. I don't want to get too deep, but John was talked about hundreds of years before by the prophets. They told of one that would come. I think you can find it in Malachi that would come before the Messiah and he would be proclaiming the way representing him preparing people's hearts for him he's known as the forerunner and that term forerunner comes from a small ship 
that would go out before the larger ones and prepare the way or lead the way for the main attraction, so to speak. And that's exactly what John was doing. He was coming and telling people about Jesus. He's coming. Be prepared. Getting everyone's attention. But at all times, he was trying to take the attention off himself and put it on to Jesus. I have my notebook here. I'm going to just take a few notes. I can already know what I want my uh, outline to be. I want the title to be Who are you? That is the same question that the Jews, that these priests asked John when they came to him. Who are you? And of course, I'll pose the same question to all of us. Who are you? Who do people mistake you for if they were going to mistake you for someone? Well, let's see what John says. First off, we found out that John was not the Christ. He was quick when we see first off who John was not. John was not. Verse 19. What did the Jews ask? And what I do is I create a quick little outline and I make a 5.5 by 8 sheet of paper, half sheet of paper that I will print out and give to each one of the kids. And I keep it simple, fairly straightforward. What did the Jews ask? They asked, who are you? What did John say? Before I write that answer down, let's look at the next question. Verse 21, he said, I'm not the Christ. I mean, verse 20. Let's look at verse 21. They asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, no. Now, if you look at The Old Testament, you'll find, I believe, in Deuteronomy. No, 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 no. I could be wrong about that. I'll have to check my reference. Maybe I'll, it's Malachi. It's one of the, um, uh, let's see, Mal it's in Malachi, I believe, where they prophesy of Elijah returning before the great and fearful day of the Lord to turn his people, his children, back to God. And here at this point, we see the Jews thinking, are you the fulfillment of that prophecy? And John says, no. Now, in Matthew chapter 3, or excuse me, Luke chapter 1, I believe verse 13 through 17 in that region, you'll see an angel appear to Zacchaeus. Or um, to John's father, Zacharias, and tell him that he would have a son named John and that he would come in the spirit of Elijah. Now, that's not saying that he is Elijah. It's saying he's coming in the spirit, in the the zealousy and the fervency and the 
the tenor that Elijah had, John would as well. Elijah showed up on the scene real quick. And he was pointing the attention to the Lord, turning the people back to the Lord. Which is exactly what John's doing. But John denies that he is Elijah, though. And denies being a prophet as well. So what did John say to all of this? That he were, he was not the people they were claiming he was. Verse 22, then they said to him, who are you? So that we may give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? So now they're getting to the point where they're like, okay. Who in the world are you? If you're not Jesus or Elijah or any of the prophet, who are you? And he reveals it. In these next few verses, so my next point would be who John was, who he was not, who he was. Let's look at it. Verse 23. John says, I I am a voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Very interesting. And if you're new to the Bible or haven't read it, or haven't read much of it, these kind of statements would be very very confusing when reading through the scripture and I think that's why a lot of people give up because it is so hard to understand sometimes but I'll personally attest that it's worth it to dig in to put the energy the effort into studying it because it all connects and it does make sense and the more you read it the more it makes sense and how it all ties together. This is a history book. Um, I think a lot of people think the Bible is just a proverbial, kind of like a Chinese proverb of just wise sayings and things of that sort, but it's a history book that even ancient historians back in this time who weren't Christians, who didn't follow Jesus, but who were actual people even attest and record their own history just from a different viewpoint and prove that these events and these things actually were real. But the controversy comes in whether or not people believe that the statements that the apostles and Jesus made were actually true. Yeah, they were real people. They actually said these things. They claimed these things. But it boils down to whether or not you believe what they were saying was either true or um, lunacy. But uh, either way, it's still interesting stuff. And uh, in my opinion, opinion, fun to learn about. So who was John? Well, the answer he gives is an answer where he goes back hundreds of years back to the book of uh, Isaiah, a prophet who prophesied of someone. He quoted it word for word of a voice crying out of the wilderness, crying out with a loud voice, make straight the way of the Lord, which is exactly the meaning of a forerunner. That's what he's doing. He's making the path straight, clearing out the brush, making the way of the Lord prepared. Matthew chapter 3, when Matthew talks about John, he gives a little more insight into his, his background or his living arrangement. And John literally came out of the desert, came out of the wilderness, 
and it says he was dressed very, very primitively. That uh, he ate honey and locust, and uh, exactly as Isaiah prophesied, he was this voice coming straight out of the wilderness. And what was he doing? He was preparing the way of the Lord. And that's what John says. He reveals that I am the one that you read about in the book of Isaiah. That you Jews, all this time you've been studying, studying, studying through Isaiah. All these prophecies, waiting. This is And they should have known through studying the Old Testament and their scriptures. They should have known that the Messiah would be coming soon after. Let's go on. Verse 24. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. And they asked him and said to him, Why then? Are you baptizing, if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? So now, they're asking him, since you have no title, why in the world are you doing something significant as baptizing and telling people to repent, if you essentially have no importance? Well... They apparently didn't listen to what he just said. He obviously has importance. He's doing exactly what Isaiah said he would do. But this word baptize here is interesting. It's the Greek word baptizo, which literally means to immerse. To immerse in the verb form. Baptism. In the sense of talking about it, it means immersion. But the verb means to immerse. And the, ver the word baptize. I'll miss take away a myth that has nothing to do with water. You can baptize into water, which is what John was doing. He was baptizing people into water, immersing them completely in water. Nothing magical or special about it as simply a means of saying that they had repented of their ways, of their sins. So when someone came to John the Baptist, John said he was giving a baptism of repentance. It means that they believed what he was saying, the message that he was bringing. They were admitting they believed what he was saying about the Messiah coming and that they had already made in their heart a step of repentance and preparing their hearts for essentially the kingdom that was to come. That's why John said repent and be baptized for the kingdom of God is at hand. This baptism in the water, there's nothing special magical about it as I said it does not automatically because you got dunked in water make you good with God it's simply an outward showing of what has happened inside look at verse 26 it says John answered them saying I baptize in water and this word but he uses I baptize in water but among you stands one. It has capitalized. Capital O. One. Whom you do not know. And he's talking about Jesus. Look what he says in verse 27. And this is where the theme of humility truly comes out. It says, John says, It is he, capital H, Jesus, who comes after me. The thong of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. I think uh, some other versions say that he says, the one that is coming after me who is preferred before me. 
John is decreasing himself and increasing the one he's talking about. John is the one who later gives the famous words, I must decrease and he must increase. What is humility? Humility is lifting others higher and more important than yourself. Considering the needs of others is more important than the needs of you. And John was not a guy who was out to get notoriety. He wasn't out to get fame, money. He simply was trying to exalt Jesus and tell people about him and prepare people to meet him. A true example of humility. So I have on here the title, Who Are You? And we see who John was not, who he was, the forerunner, preparing the way. And then the third point, the last point would be whom John represented, which would be Jesus. He wasn't Jesus, but he simply represented him. And that will essentially be the outline that I will follow. And I think we'll be good to go. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this. It may be a little different than what you're used to seeing in ASMR videos. But uh, that's the beauty of this community. And each individual channel that you find, there's a little bit of personality, or a lot of personality, and all the people we see, we all bring different things to the table, so I hope that along with being relaxing, and hopefully giving you tingles, that uh, maybe you learned something today, and that uh, even if you fell asleep, maybe you see that some of the, what's in here is very interesting. Well, again, I thank you for tuning in. Hit the subscribe button and look out for my next video. Have a good day.